Good evening and welcome to the Deerfield Select Board Board of Health meeting October 10th, 2018 at 7 p.m. here at the municipal offices in South Deerfield. Uh, we'll start out with the Pledge of Allegiance. Would you please rise? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, this meeting is being recorded and televised. Uh, we do not have minutes from October 3rd. And, uh, Kip, can I a just make an announcement? Sure. Um, the flu clinic is um, at the elementary school noon, uh, 10 to noon on Saturday, October 13th, 10 to noon for flu shots. Just bring your insurance card and um, help us practice our um, limited emergency dispensing site, um, but also you can get your flu shot. Oh, I thought you were gonna say, let us practice giving flu shots. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have professionals there for that. No, they're, okay. they're taking care of it. Uh, do you wanna skip down and do the uh, one day liquor license? Yes. For um, that Outlook like Winery? Idea. Do you wanna do that? Sure. Um, these are here. Yeah, these are here this is for the the Apple Festival. Let's find that. Uh, there are, I think there are three, right? I have two online, but there are three. Right. So I, I make a, I make a motion to approve a one-day liquor license for Outlook Winery and Brewery. This is for the, um, the Yankee, Yankee Candle Company Apple Festival, which will be um, October 13th. Um, I second that. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 And then there is a <coughs> another uh, one-day liquor license for the same festival. This is for uh, Headwater Cider. Um, so I make a motion to approve the one-day liquor license for Headwater Cider um, to be held at Yankee Candle Company um, Apple Festival being held from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. on Saturday, October 13th. Um, I second that. The only thing I wanted to ask is, was there an insurance certificate with that? Yes. There, there was, are. okay, yep. great. Yep. That's all been attached. Yep. So no further discussion, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. And I have one. I think there's Hardwick too. Yes, Hardwick. Hardwick yeah. Yep. So make a motion to uh, for a one day liquor license for Hardwick uh, Vine Vineyards and Winery LLC for the same Apple Festival being held on sa Saturday, October 13th. I second that. Is there any further discussion? Nope. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Yep. Right. Well, that was pretty good. Yeah, so we can sign these. <coughs> um, we could do public comment. And that way we can get that out of the way. Okay. Is there anyone in the public that would like to make a comment about anything? No? Okay. I just want to also announce that the um, special town meeting that was originally scheduled for October 29th has been rescheduled for November 15th. And I would also like to mention, seeing as Bruce here, um, just to remind the sewer study committee and the public that we will be having um, our first sewer study workshop with Dave Prickett. Um, let me find the date here. 30th, 31st. What was that? Oh, on uh, October 23rd at 6 p.m. here. So if all the public want to come and listen to the first presentation oh. of his findings, we'd love to have you. Did Wendy, did Wendy email you? I'd asked her to email out a request for the sewer study committee to come. You haven't seen that yet. Okay, I'll follow up on that. Uh, oh. There's kind of a notice out to me that it kind of has a meeting. Okay, okay. And we maybe did. that was it then. I'll, I'll find out then. Okay. Trevor, you did say it was 6.30? I had, uh, I had six o'clock. Okay. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, I have 6 o'clock, too. Um, 
There's also um, the web EOC <coughs> review evacuation plan template, flooding template with MEMA here next Tuesday at 6 o'clock. And then we have um, a selectman's meeting next week. Um, MAPCO meeting and a MCAP meeting next week. And the and the uh, senior center uh, Polish club spaghetti oh, dinner. Spaghetti yes, supper. spaghetti dinner at five thirty. Polish club, please come support the senior center. That's all I got at the moment. So actually, we have pretty. That's at five thirty. I guess. Oh no, I get five thirty. Technology. Yep. Well, I can announce that the mosquitoes are still flying around. We were supposed to have a frost on Saturday, so that's really, hopefully that will be the end of the season. This is the last week that DPH is testing. Um, there's st there is a tremendous amount of West Nile disease mm -hmm. circulating in the community, so please, please still be aware of mosquitoes. Um, just make sure your screens are in place the next couple days and um, you're, you're careful in the evening and early morning. The only good thing that's happened is because we've had so much dampness, the ticks are a lot less ticks. Um, and we still have free testing, or the, not free, subsidized testing. It's still $15, but it's not $200. So it's $15 if you have a tick, if you do pick up a tick, which will be happening probably in the next um, six or eight weeks um, until we have snow, the ticks are really active or will be active again. And um, so remember, if, if, if they're attached to you and you, you really, for peace of mind, you, you can go on our website and um, get the information to mail them down to UMass, and it's just $15. We have more public. Any more public comment while we're waiting? Come on up. Well, yes. Oh, yeah. oh, we got to well, say, come it up. It depends yeah. on the answer whether they have a comment or not. <laughs> come on up and state your name. Yes, you now have to say help. your name, Bruce. Okay. We're, we're getting, um, I'm getting people calling me saying they can't hear people, and you have to announce who you are. That's all right. It's hard to hear you right back there. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, seriously, with the air conditioner going. Really? On. Yep. And I don't know how oh, come the uh, uh, speakers are not working back there. But uh, All right. Yes. I'm sorry about that. So um, the only question I had, were you going to, I know you mentioned something about uh, doing uh, some input from the public on your draft sewer policy. Was that on the table for tonight or not? I mean, if, no, if not, No, I didn't then, have it on here tonight. But okay. I didn't know whether you are going to bring it under old business or something like that, so. Then I guess no comment then. Okay. <laughs> but I'd love to hear your comment after. Okay. <laughs> We're ready for you. You can come right up. Step right up. Welcome. Did you want to read this one? Sure. Yeah. How are you? Hi. Welcome. Hi. Welcome. I do want to apologize again for um, not having that second week printed. It actually happened to us twice. They've taken our check for two weeks of being printed. Oh, and, geez. And, and not. And Wendy drove it up there. So they certainly had our request. Well, okay. Well, let's we'll Here we uh, are. So I'm going um, oh, to read this to open the hearing. Well, okay. Do we have a well, couple? But I, I do want to apologize. Yeah. It happened two to Natural minutes. Bakers. Yeah. Same thing. We'll just wait a couple minutes. Later. Yep, we have to wait till 7.15. But I, I really did want to apologize. Thank you. 
Yeah, sadly, that two weeks or, yeah, two more weeks cost us. You have no idea. I know, and it's I'm It's very, so very disappointing. It took us almost six months in special legislation to fi fi uh, fix the natural bakers. Hmm. Um, not being printed. Hmm. It just, it was crazy. I want to introduce also uh, Cindy Cody, who is the president of the Dumont Company and Hassie oh. Savage as well. Welcome. So oh, she's hi. Here. Nice to meet you. She does a lot more than that. <laughs> You can sit in the hot seat if you want. You watch the clock and you wait for a minute to turn. It's like forever. forever right? I know. And if you need another minute, it will I know. Quick. All I need is a minute. <laughs> that was only 10 seconds, will you? Okay. It's 7.15, and I'm going to open the uh, public hearing for the um, expedited permit site plan review for the Dumont uh, Industrial Project located on Merrigan Way. Um, we're I'll going to, uh, um, Trevor's going to read uh, the notice that was published in the newspaper. Uh, Town of Deerfield Select Board Notice of Public Hearing. The Town of Deerfield Select Board will hold a public hearing pursuant to Mass General Laws Chapter 40A, aka the Zoning Act, and Mass General Laws Chapter 43D, aka the Expedited Permitting Law, on October 10th. Uh, 2018 at 7.15 p.m. at the Deerfield Municipal Offices, 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Massachusetts, to consider an expedited permit project uh, proposed by the Dumont Company for a portion of the property commonly known as the Oxford property, more specifically identified as Assessor's Map 175, Lot 55, including the following applications, an expedited permit project application, under the Deerfield Zoning Bylaw, Section 4700, a special permit application under Deerfield Zoning Bylaw, Section 2230, 4700, and 5300, a site plan review application under the Deerfield Zoning Bylaw, Section 4700 and 5400, and a stormwater permit application under the Deerfield Code, Chapter 155. These applications were submitted to the town on August 23rd. 2018. Copies of these applications are on file with the town clerk at the Deerfield Municipal Offices at the above address and are available for inspection during the regular business hours of the town clerk. Any person interested in wishing to be heard should appear at, that, at the time and place identified above for publication September 22nd, 2018 and September 29th, 2018. So the, this hearing was uh, properly posted and notification was given out. We also received all of the uh, sign notices to all the abutters and the abutters uh, as required. Um, the way we're going to do this is we're going to open the, the hearing to uh, the applicants. We're going to hear from them. Then the board will ask them questions as we feel necessary. And after that, we will open it up to the public for comment, okay? Go ahead, Tony. You're up. Go. No, go ahead. Right. Okay. <clears throat> Tony Winseski, uh, senior engineer with SVE Associates in Brattleboro, Vermont. Tony, can you just speak up a little bit louder? Because I, I, I can tell people can't really hear. Okay. Uh, my so, name is Tony Winseski. I'm a senior engineer with SVE Associates in Brattleboro, Vermont, here representing Mr. Hogopian, the Dumont Company, Assy Savage, and One Development, who is the construction uh, contractor for the project. Uh, back in July, Mr. Hogopian purchased Parcel C, is what's known, um, and uh, is looking to consolidate his manufacturing businesses in Deerfield in, uh, uh, in the project that we're here tonight. Parcel C is a 2.87 acre size parcel, and it's um, on the southwest corner of the property that was formerly Oxford Pickle, and it, it's located in what was previously a portion of the tank field. Uh, access to the parcel from 
Sugarloaf Street will be along Merrigan Way, and at the end of Merrigan Way, which stops as is approved right now, uh, and the westerly driveway of the highway garage, uh, will be extended through an easement that we have, uh, Mr. Hocopian has, to access and for utilities to serve uh, the property. Uh, so uh, part of the project is to do those offsite improvements and extend about 290 feet of Merrigan Way or extension of that, which will serve the project. It'll also serve uh, New England um, Natural Bakers pro project also, and I have an exhibit that will show both of those together as a compilation. So you'll get to see what the campus will look like um, ultimately when it's done. I think that's beneficial for, for the board. Topography on the site, it's fairly flat. As I said, it was formerly the tank field. Um, it's devoid of topsoil. It's uh, broken pavement, uh, gravel, because if you think of the operations back with the tank field, there were trucks that needed to get in for salting, trucks for conveyors for pickles and that. So it's, it's very compacted, um, and there's a lot of weed growth right now. Uh, <clears throat> An important feature of the site is on the southerly side of the site, there's an existing fence and very mature uh, vegetation along that area. I believe the, um, uh, the uh, uh, former owner, Oxford Pickle, is the ones that uh, created, uh, installed that fence and, and did the vegetation. I don't know that positive, but it looks like it's been there for a long time. Uh, our project will maintain that um, fence in that vegetation as uh, a screened buffer to the residents that uh, uh, back up to us on, on Thayer Street. And uh, we feel that that's very important to leave in place. Oh. Sorry about that. They're just adjusting, trying yeah. to get music, yeah. sound out there. I, I, you just, um, I just want to interrupt one minute and just say thank you very much for um, being willing to maintain that fence and that mature growth. I know it is on your property, um, so essentially you're giving your neighbors um, that, f that screening and that fence line, and so I'm uh, very appreciative of that. And we're also giving them access to the property that, <coughs> that they, uh, the, the pickle factory uh, built that fence, is my understanding, <coughs> on their own property. So that the um, side of the fence that's on the property owners, the butters side, uh, part of that property is actually uh, owned by us. Uh, but by not moving that fence, we're effectively, you know, allowing that uh, the use of that space. So in addition to the uh, to that buffer, uh, we're also allowing the an additional buffer, essentially of of whatever vegetation or or enjoyment the uh, butters have. Currently. I, I, I just wanted to thank you because there it's considerable amount of feet and I really appreciate that um, and I'm sure all the neighbors do too Great. so thank you very much yeah our thoughts are that anything we planted will not replicate that in a short period of time it's just right. the right thing to do um, on the southwest corner and the southerly property line there's an existing swale there I imagine it was created to control drainage from running off on the neighbors when they pickle factory was working down in the southwest corner there's an existing catch basin with a pipe that drains north to an existing detention band basin that was created and I say that because I'm going to come back to that later on when I talk about storm drainage a little bit but that's how the drainage was controlled on that, that portion of the property um, there's existing public water in Merrigan Way and dry utilities within Merrigan Way that serves the highway garage mm -hmm. I will note that the water line um, does cross the uh, the existing water line does cross the New England Bakers property and that's how that's set up um, our intent is to tie on to that and extend that west when we improve Merrigan Way to provide access to New England Bakers and, and to our property um, that's uh, that's part of the project um, there is an existing sewer main stub on the New England Bakers property which is on the west side and I'll get more to that. Um, uh, that was uh, service to the pickle factory back in the day. And it's the appropriate place to connect to f for the properties because it's low. We've TV'd that lateral. It's in good shape. And that ties to the 21-inch interceptor sewer that runs along Blacksmith Brook. Um, so that's just a little background on the property as is today. Okay. And um, what I'd like to do now is just uh, tell you a little bit more about the proposed project and um, 
uh, what we're looking to do and kind of go through it as if we were going through the performance standards in the regulation for section uh, uh, 4700, which is the expedited permitting section. So the project is a two-phase build-out uh, of building, uh, which would total 35,200 square feet of, of offices, manufacturing, and storage. The first phase, which is identified there uh, to be built, is 20,900 square feet. The second phase, which is dashed to the west of it, would be uh, an additional 14,300 square feet. Now, some uh, uh, important things with this is we are going to do some lighting, obviously, uh, for the building. There will be three light standards out in the parking lot that will be 16 feet tall, and they are um, LED. And then we will have um, wall packs along the building. Now, we supplied the town with a photometric plan um, showing the calculations to, to show that there would be no light trespass on our neighbors to the south or to the west. And if you flip, you should get to the photometric plan. Uh, nope, another one. I think it's the next one. Another one. <laughs> Sorry. So I think it's hey, Gary's helping me here. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there, there we go. So you Great. can see where you see the zero zeros, that's the facility park plan, nothing goes over it. You will see a little light trespass on the east side, but we don't feel that that's a problem because that's on the stormwater basin of the highway garage. It's right. probably a good thing to have a little light there. Yep. And you'll see some light trespass, not very heavy, um, but on Merrigan Way and um, out in front. We think that's a good idea because that's where the intersection is where trucks will be backing up in that but nothing to the west and nothing to our neighbors to the south. So Great. in meeting the requirements, um, we feel that we meet those and we have a good lighting design for this project. Okay. We flip back to the second um, sheet where we show the, the uh, composite of both New England Bakers and the Dumont here. You can see that um, when we extend, <clears throat> when we extend Merrigan Way, uh, to the west here, we have our loading docks and our turns in here for parking and that. Well, this is the service and loading docks for New England Bakers. So oh. this is, this is, works perfectly for driveway. So a little bit of light in that area we feel is a good thing. Yeah. Okay. Um, the next thing I wanted to talk about is noise a little bit. And um, one of the requirements is that, um, uh, our hours of operation. So hours of operation at the site will be consistent with um, 4900, which is the, the performance standards for manufacturing facilities. And um, that would be from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. That's, we're, we're saying that we would be consistent with that. Correct. Noise levels also will not meet, or I mean, will not exceed 80 dBA or an increase of 10 dBA above the ambient at the property line. The reason why I can say that is we don't have uh, air conditioning units or any HVAC on our roof. We have ground mounted and we have fences and screening around that to deaden that noise. That's the only thing that we have on the south and west side of the building. All our activities are to the north. We've done that specifically so that our work is more towards the industrial center of the site mm -hmm. and not towards our residents to the south and west. That's really nice. Thank you. And that's your plants and stuff, that, you know, the machines that are inside the building? Is that what you're well, talking about? Well, and then if you look, and, and we have um, cross-sections of the building, and Gary can go into that a little bit. On the back side, we have no, no openings on the back side. Gotcha. On the west side, we have no openings except the man door. On the west side of the building, we're going to have a little patio for workers to be able to go outside at yeah. and eat lunch on nice days and sure. get a little fresh air. Um, but all our activities, our doors, our windows, and loading, loading docks. docks, and access to, is off the front. Okay. And we've moved the building as far east as we far possibly can, too. Um, and it's, it fits because we have parking and we have setback requirements around the site of vegetated setbacks. So we have to meet that, plus the building setbacks of 25 feet. Uh, <clears throat> Thank you. Landscaping. Um, there's... As I mentioned before, we're going to maintain the mature landscaping at the back side of the property on the southerly property line. Um, in front, we have that 20-foot um, landscape 
buffer between the edge of our property line and the parking area. So in that area, we have some trees and we have um, uh, shrub mixes in front. And Gary, that's what is it, tuplos and uh, winterberry and that. And we'll also do some planting up against the building behind the, behind the sidewalk. So, I mean, that's our major entrance. And you heard Mr. Hagopian talk about he has international guests come and he wants Absolutely. to keep that really looking nice. And, and, and so we think that'll do a really good job. Our trash enclosure over on the right, we're going to screen that with some spruce. And last week we uh, received approval from the Conservation Commission and uh, received our order conditions, which we've already recorded. Uh, one of the things that came out with that is we're going to be planting some white pines on the northeast side of the infiltration basin and on the southeast side of the in infiltration basin as a tree improvement to the riverfront. That's riverfront area. It's totally disturbed at this point. When we get in, we're going to prove it because we're going to be loaming seeding that area and also we'll be planting those trees. There's no low topsoil on the site, so that's an import okay. for us on this project to be able to create organic soil to be able to grow um, grass and, and things of that nature. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's our landscaping scheme um, for the building. And um, there are no outside storage areas associated with this project. So we don't have to do any screening in that. The raw materials for this business are, 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 are expensive. So that, even waste product, is all going to be stored inside the structure. So we don't have any, any, um, um, any uh, screening or landscaping for outside storage. I mean, just to kind of mind if I yeah. jump in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, we talked about this uh, at our last discussion, but uh, <clears throat> Regardless of the additional cost of, of producing this, we've decided to add to the building um, specifically storage, indoor storage for waste or recycling materials, essentially. We, our process, uh, you know, gives off some, some shavings, metal shavings. And so uh, we've produced, and Gary's going to put up here, you can see what uh, we're having an indoor storage space for those materials. Yep. Okay. And that's specifically for any waste material, any, any recycling materials that we have, which by the way, all go off site after uh, we're done producing and we've gathered the, the recycling uh, materials. We have uh, a recycling company come in and pick that up. but. Uh, but there, there are no outdoor storage spaces for recycled materials, period. That's great. Okay. Uh, speaking a little about stormwater management, uh, stormwater management for this project meets the DEP requirements and also meets the local recommendations. Uh, uh, to talk, I'm going to stand up here and talk loud so I can talk a little bit about the... Uh, Tony, the there's, a, there's a microphone that you could pull around right there. there if you want. Move the whole stand over if it's easier. Yeah. Um, you can take the wire off the bottom there, Tony, so you don't have, if you want to make it free. Is that, can you hear me? Yes. Is that better? I probably can talk really loud. I mean, there's not. Well, it's, can it's, it's, for, the TV? it's for TV. It's for TV. Oh, it's for TV. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's good. You're on camera. So. I, I never remember that. <laughs> um, <clears throat> okay, so essentially what we have, the, the, the roof will be pitched from north to south. It's going to be sloped. It won't be over the 48-foot maximum height requirement, and I'll mention that one more time. That's being done so that the roof, uh, if Mr. Hogopian wants to, he can put solar on that roof. It's facing south. It's a per perfect place to be able to do it, and, um, and so t to reduce his energy that cost, he intent, can do that. That is the intent, by the way. Okay. So with that, we have a swale. We're going to, remember I said we're going to rework, but honor that swale that was there for the existing conditions. And we're going to also put an underground storm drain system, minor, in case right now we have splashing off the roof, but if they want to connect to an underground system, they'll have the ability to do that. So it's a little yeah. uh, extra um, 
repercussion. That all drains to an infiltration basin on the west side over towards Blacksmith Brook. I, I, I just want to, again, sorry to interrupt, but I just want to say thank you very much because we are definitely not wanting to have more additional space for mosquitoes to breed. So right. I right. really appreciate you doing that. I know it is more expensive, but I appreciate it. In the front, because we have pavement, we've got to treat it. And because we're within the protection zone for the well down at the water district, even though it's my understanding is not being used, it could be brought back online. Right. So in this area where we're collecting runoff within the pavement, we will have deep sum catch basins that will drain through an oil and water separator before discharging to the infiltration basin. We're required to take out 44% TSS before we discharge to an infiltration system when we're going from pavement in the protection zone. So we've done that. Now this basin's been designed to hold the 100 year storm without any discharge. If for reason that we get multiple storms and there is a discharge out of this basin, Remember I said there was this catch basin down on the southwest corner that drains a pipe to this existing detention area. What we're going to do is we're going to remove that pipe, but we're going to build a drop inlet over that pipe on the other side of the weir so that if water does drain over, it'll get into that, get into the existing pipe, drain over to the detention area, and then if it does spill out of that, it'll get to Blacksmith Brook. There's no new discharges with this design. Everything is utilizing what's there and making modification and putting facilities in that meet the mass DET, DEP requirements and also your local requirements. Thank you. There is an O&M plan or an operations and maintenance plan as part of the stormwater management plan for this project. Um, it, uh, it gives the owner um, timelines and tasks that they have to do to make sure that they maintain the storm drain system as designed so that it functions for a long period of time. That's in the, in, the, in the work. And also in the plans, there's an erosion control plan which uh, the contractor will put in BMPs to protect sediment. Our main concern here obviously is Blacksmith Brook to make sure we don't have discharge there. But everything is so self-contained in this area and it's flat where I would anticipate no erosion uh, associated with the site. This uh, project, because it's over an acre, uh, we're required to do a notice of intent with the federal government to get co uh, um, coverage under the mass N NPDES um, general permit. Uh, notice of intent, I believe, has been filed already on that. Um, one development will be managing that because of the construction guys on the site, mm -hmm. although Eric is responsible. That talks about storm drainage. Um, some things with... Um, Site development standards in the code, uh, there are no sensitive vegetation on the site. As I said, it was pretty much denuded, and we're actually going to um, bring that back and plant some vegetation and improve the riverfront area. Um, what's, also, the, what's the grade of the of that um, area that you're going to bring in the topsoil to? Oh, well, so a little, a little more. Um, after we get off the parking area here, we have a gravel drive in that pad area there that'll all be grassed lawn right. on the outside will be lawn we have different kinds of mixes which are identified in the landscape plan for the slope planting um, on the on the basin uh, grading and that's the steepest part those are four right. and three to one slopes the maximum we can do is three to one by coat so right. on this side we're at four to one it's not a very deep basin um, and uh, and so we have the gravel access here to get to maintain the HVAC, but also for emergency purposes. The fire department can get around to this side of the building and also they have access to front. We'll also be building a hydrant for the fire department. We've coordinated with New England Builders. We're gonna put it on our property, but they have one here. So what we'll do is we'll, when we extend that, because we'll be building first, we're gonna build that hydrant in, their, in the appropriate location. It's been coordinated between uh, thank you. Thank you. Their for engineers that. and myself. Yeah, we've we've been uh, meeting with the uh, folks from New England Natural Bakers and and working to, you know, really responsibly co-develop the the entire property so that uh, we're sharing uh, a lot of resources and uh, intellectual uh, property here that uh, will really help us both in the long run. That's fantastic. Good. Thank you. Thank you for doing that. Um, so as far as uh, you know. 
traffic here that we're going to build to here so the trucks will, can come in, they can back into, we have three loading docks, two depressed and one at grade uh, dock. Parking, we're providing 44 spaces, two of which will be ADA. That meets the code. I think when we first came through and had, we were more or less matching the employees, we, we figured we'll just meet the code. So we're up to, to the 44, which I think is one space for every 500 square feet in the industrial zone. So we meet the, um, meet the uh, requirements there. When phase two comes, we would just add the exist, uh, additional parking on this side of the building here. Uh, the stormwater facilities are sized for that already. So there's, there's no need to do any more except build the building and, and extend the parking. Um, as mentioned, um, uh, access to Sugarloaf Street, there's an existing walk that was built uh, with the highway garage. That's how pedestrians will get their bus routes on Sugarloaf Street. There are two bus routes that run on Sugarloaf Street. So say some worker wanted to take the bus to work, they could do that, and then they right. could walk up and um, walk up and cross and, and come to the building. So you got pedestrian access, vehicle access into the site was, is, is, is a, uh, really good. And then the, like I said before, um, because you have concerns in the regulations for site distance. So we have great site distance at Sugarloaf Street for industrial, for trailer trucks and everybody leaving. You've got great site distance. Um, coming into the site with both driveways where both, you know, their truck traffic and our truck traffic being opposite one another, that's the perfect case. We don't have offsets where you can't see and that. So this, this works out well for, the, for both properties and really has no effect on the, um, on the highway garage. So, you know, their, their moving movement is here. Our movement will be here. So from a, from a traffic standpoint and from a pedestrian standpoint, I think we're pretty set. Uh, we're talking how, how, about traffic. Yeah, um, how many d truck deliveries um, would you anticipate? There'll be three, three trailer trucks a week on average. That's bringing raw product to the, to the building metal and then all of the finished product goes out in box trucks fedex ups um, and so they're a smaller smaller truck um, 36 employees we're saying 80 trips a day you know coming to work going home from work you might get a few people that might go out to lunch or something but um, well we hope when so this, yeah hope when, so. when this yes. was studied back when the town commissioned the report i think it was a vhb um, they did a traffic analysis for two, two, uh, two, two options. One was a multi-use thing. The other one was a very large industrial complex. At that time, they were estimating, I, I'm going from memory here a little bit, 1,050 trips a day. And in the report, there were no mitigation that was identified for that yeah. scenario. Yeah. So we're much less than that. Uh, it should have no impact from a mitigation standpoint on Sugarloaf Street. <clears throat> okay, and so you you have a, a a category within the guidelines or the the regulations as far as aesthetics. So this is a metal building. Gary can talk more to it if you have questions about the siding, what it's going to look like. Um, but our opinion, this is going to fit very well with the highway garage, and it's going to fit with New England Bakers. If you looked and well, you've gone through and given a permit for that, and you've seen New England Bakers building, I mean, this is all going to fit, and it's all going to fit together so that it's really going to look um, like it was planned together, to be honest with you. I, in my opinion, I think it's going to look like it, it was planned together, and I think that was the goal of the town yeah. when yes. they put out the RFP. Yep. So, um, like I said, I'll let Gary talk more about the building. I'm the outside guy. Uh, Utilities, as mentioned somewhat before, it's very simple. There's existing water mains, a water main in Merrigan. That will be extended, and a six-inch and a two-inch line will be brought to the Dumont building for fire service and, and domestic use. We're coordinating with New England Bakers to drop off a fire service and a domestic service to their building. Currently, there's a private main that runs through their property, which comes up and serves the highway garage. 
discussions with the DPW is they're looking, um, and they'll probably talk to the town, of extending this main off the edge of the pave and making connection in Sugarloaf Street, which is probably the right thing to do for the town to serve the garage and, and that. So yes. that's, that's the ultimate intent. So while we're in here doing this, we're, we're coordinating with them to drop some services off so when they build, they can just tie to it. Perfect. Uh, we're working with Eversource. There's, um, there's an existing pole, 47, out here on the north um, corner of the intersection here, underground, runs to the transformer back, which feeds the highway garage. We're going to extend from that and feed our transformer, which is here. So we're working with Eversource, and Verizon works with them too, to work on an easement to cover that. When they were serving just the highway garage, there was no need for an easement. But because we're coming in second and New England will be coming in third, we're going to have to work with them for an easement. So that m might mean the town's, I believe, is going to have to give an easement to Eversource for that. And then New England Bakers will be given an, uh, an easement. And also Dumont will be given an easement so, for that. So these utilities the, will be underground? They are existing yes. right now to that transformer. Right. And, and you then will continue ours will that. all be underground Perfect. also. Yes. Okay. Tony, on that subject, I have a quick question. Do the utility companies usually get easements from municipalities to go underground on town property? Well, sometimes it's, i got to think of it, uh, there's another term. I don't know if it's a license, um, but in the case of, for instance, the recent condo project, they've got an easement over the entire, because the roads are not taken. Okay. So we've got entire easements over all of that. Um, I, there's, it's a petition, I think, if it's within, a, uh, that's the wording, I think that's the mechanism, if within it's within right a public away. right away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. um, so this, I think they're just looking for an easement because you could petition part and then some you'd have to easement. So uh, I think they're going to go the easement route, but that hasn't totally been determined yet. We're working with the services and that'll get kicked over to the actual right away group, which then I'll be working with and working with New England and Dumont and the town to try to get that to all happen. Um, uh, one other thing that uh, we think we talked about, uh, because we can't get natural gas to the building, we're going to be installing in front of the building in the parking area two 1,000 gallon propane tanks to serve, serve the facility. So the last thing I wanted to touch on is, is the dimensional requirements in Tony, the Tony, can I just ask you? Um, yeah. Now, New England Bakers had a really hard time, but the, they, when they talked to Berkshire Gas, um, they were going to use less gas than they had in Greenfield. So if you're moving down from Greenfield, you couldn't get them to hook you up? So uh, we've, uh, uh, Derek, who's here behind me, has done a yeoman's job of trying to get the gas company to allow us to, uh, to unplug the gas from our Greenfield location and plug it in here. We would much rather have this facility serviced uh, by, right. you know, uh, yep. natural gas. And frankly, we would not use any more gas, likely less right. gas. We're going to have a, 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 a full solar roof. We're going to, I mean, we're just efficient. going to use Building. less energy right. altogether. But uh, sadly, the, the gas company is, uh, I would say they've dug their heel in and basically said, no, we're not going to do it. So. If there's any help that the uh, town could give, we would um, be very well, help. We would be very we, happy uh, about that. We had Stan Rosenberg um, talk to them before, um, and that that's how Natural Bakers was got the hookup, or supposedly. So, um, you know, let me. Um, I'll reach out to Joe Comerford. To Joe Comerford. Yeah, and we'll see, see what we call. can do. I'd be happy to meet uh, together yeah. with you and and. Uh, I I, and I don't. I honestly don't know. Um, that's they. That's not a good. I, I mean, if you're unplugging, you should be able to. We, we, unplug. We're willing to unplug our existing yes. building right. from the natural gas. Right. I, I don't want to have. If uh, you're an above existing ground. customer, you should right. be able right. to unplug right. and move it. Yeah. So it doesn't go along aesthetically with our plans. Absolutely. But it is what it is. If that's what we have to do, then we have a. You know, well, we have to we'll do work it. on that because. Okay. Thank we, you. We, um, like I said, with natural bakers, um, they were. 
being obnoxious as well and they were obnoxious with us yeah. as well. Yes, oh, and and the, and the, it was crazy because they were going to use a lot less energy than they were using currently. Yeah, a much more efficient. It was a much more efficient operation. It was newer equipment, and you know the whole thing. Yeah, so. there were a lot of excuses about infrastructure and sizing. Even though you're moving, it, you can't. You know, you're closer yeah. to the main lines here than you are where your yeah. current position is. So. Yeah. We'll find yeah, out. I, I understand that it'll devalue my building in Greenfield, but I, I'm okay with that. So I, I, I would much rather have the service uh, in my uh, existing building. And we don't do secondary processes like heat treat or something that we need a great deal of, of uh, gas. This is just for domestic hot water and uh, yeah. ambient you know, air. Well, I have my um, coalition meeting tomorrow, pipeline, <coughs> municipal uh, coalition against the pipeline, and we I'll bring this up as well so um because that's our group that Great. pressured them the last time so because it's it's hokey it's a hokey thing i mean it's the same amount of gas or less gas less. i know all right thank you thank you for bringing that up yeah yeah the um so last few dimensional requirements the building will not be over the 48 foot maximum height regulation the, um, we provided the 25-foot minimum setback to the building, uh, and the impervious coverage on this is, um, is about 40% right now, even with um, addition, so we're much less than the maximum 80%. So in our opinion, the DeMont project meets the requirements of Section 4700 expedited permits. It also meets the performance standards of Section 4900, and I think our feeling is that the project is consistent with the manufacturing history of the Oxford Pickle site. And we, um, that concludes my uh, presentation. And thank you. And we'd be happy to answer any questions. Uh, the only thing that I didn't hear you mention, well, there might have been a couple of things. Uh, what about signage that you would well, like? Signage, we okay. do have signage. I'm going to address yeah. that. Yeah. Right. So uh, before we leave the site plan, we would. Although we're not asking for it tonight, we would like to have a discussion with the town about a directory sign out on Sugarloaf Street we that would about identify that. the town facility as well as the New England Natural Bakery facility and the mm -hmm. Dumont facility out here. So um, We will also come back for signage on the building, and the plan would be to actually put uh, a building-mounted sign and in accordance with the town requirements, actually right on the building itself, so as you drove in, you could see it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, we do have provisions for um, um, on the site plan. You'll see for freestanding sign um, that intention is to meet the zoning code. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're not intending to do anything outside the, the zoning code. I I'm, I think it would be really nice to have a, a you know directory sign, yeah. an attractive sign. Yeah. So that would be very nice. Um, I know you um, I, You mentioned the fire department had, um, uh, but I didn't hear anything about the security system that you might have on or there. So uh, in addition to the lighting, obviously, uh, perimeter lighting, uh, we'll have a security system in the building, obviously. So that'll uh, consist of uh, cameras in and out of the building, as well as uh, access control, so a key card access uh, uh, for our uh, Authorized uh, individuals, employees, and such, um, and then uh, you know a burglar alarm. So that's the sort of security that we we'll have. Okay. Thank you. And the our our that. police would have the card card access. Yeah, right? I mean okay. it's just like all the other buildings. I mean there'll be a yeah. Knox box, I would imagine, right. and for the yeah. fire department and, and okay. so forth. Yeah. And uh, in addition to the security system, there'll also be a full fire alarm in the building, which is a requirement yeah. of the building code. And the building is sprinkler as well. That's correct. I interrupted, so I had most of my questions um, answered. I I know you um, gave us the light plan, um, but I just wanted to make sure that the lighting was not um, any of that flickering lighting. That's, I know that's like like low energy, you know. So. 
You did mention it was all no, LED. No Las Vegas style signs. <laughs> no, 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 I know no signage, but you're not going to have anything that. No, it's all uh, LED lighting that'll be okay. constant level lighting. And, right. Uh, Okay. It's all sharp cut off, so it does. You, you won't see the light source if you're looking from the houses next door. You may see the building glowing, but you won't see the light. Okay. Right. That's Just great. wanted to make sure, because it's kind of annoying. Um, I'm, I'm pretty much. When you're in full operation, um, there, there's no. I mean, you're building, especially from the residential side, there's no openings, but there, uh, you, you don't anticipate any escape of the noise, right? No. I mean, uh, you know, we, we operate routinely at this point um, during the summer. We don't have a climate-controlled facility now. This will be. But we operate routinely currently with, uh, uh, you know, doors open, and we're in a neighborhood at this point. So, I mean, we literally have homes all the way around our building. And we've never received, I've been, I've owned the business for two years and uh, it's been there for 70 years and we've never received a complaint from a neighbor because of noise. So it's a, you know, this is a machine shop essentially. So uh, right. it's distribution and uh, light manufacturing. Yep. And all of the doors, uh, as Tony said, are, are uh, facing north. So, um, so, and there aren't any uh, openings for uh, on the south or I guess that's the west side, correct? Yeah. Okay. Um, do you guys have any Anything. questions? No, I was going through this. I'm just going back through to see if there was anything that I... I'm, I had my answer. I'm good. Do you have any other questions, Tara? I don't believe so. I think you know we. Ha I had only seen one letter. I think so far from a concerned citizen. And I think he addressed everything that I remember in that letter. I was just looking for that. But um. Yeah. yeah. All right. I, I, if you um, want to go for a quick for, public right. comment. Um. I guess at this time, if there's anyone in the audience that would like to make a comment or ask any questions, you know, please come forward. Come on up. <clears throat> Rocky, you have to say your name. Yeah. You just did. <laughs> My name is Rocky Foley. I live at 16 South Main Street. I'm an immediate abutter. I'm uh, right across from Blackfoot Brook, and I'm on the southwest corner. Uh, on my own, about two weeks ago, I took a ride up to the facility unannounced uh, in Greenfield. And my biggest concern about this whole thing was noise, okay? Yeah. I got out of the car, and like he said, all the garage doors were open, the office doors were open and everything. I got out of the car, my question was answered. <laughs> it was right there. I couldn't hear anything, and the doors were wide open. So uh, well, I just want to let you know. That's, that's good to hear. That was my, that was my biggest uh, concern. Yeah. Uh, second was lighting, and you seem to exp have explained that okay. Uh, the only other thing is... Did you have any questions on the landscaping? Because on it's, it sounds like they're going to be doing quite a lot of improvement on Yeah, no, side. I, I appreciate that where they uh, cited the building, too. They put it the further, furthest away from uh, yeah. us, the black person, closer to the garage, so I'm happy about that. Um, I had a question about, like, inside maintenance, you know, Floors, trash, you know. Uh, would you have you do it yourself, or do you have a private? Uh, we we currently yeah we currently manage that uh, in house. So it's a really clean operation. I, I would have invited you to come inside if I had known you. No. <laughs> lurking in the parking lot. No. <laughs> no when you, uh, one of you guys came out actually. Yeah. Uh, the girls in the office they went got yeah. somebody and blacked yeah. out and everything like that. Yeah, so, no, we, we handle all that stuff in-house, and, uh, you know, to the extent that the business grows and so forth, we may need to subcontract it, but uh, but we run a pretty tight ship. Yeah, the only reason I asked about maintenance is because I didn't know whether somebody would be coming in, like, at midnight or something oh, like no. that. Uh, so that was my only concern no, about Just that. me, maybe, checking okay. on things. Right. <laughs> well, otherwise, I say welcome to the neighborhood. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to ask a question? Sure, come on up. Come on up. Hi. 
I'm Sarah Alliam. I live at 14 South Main Street. I just had a question about the traffic access. Will there be any vehicles going down Coates Avenue to access the site? I don't know if that's even. Uh, that's, I would say no, because can it, anyone go? No, up? the bakery will be located there, so uh, okay. their only access is going to be Merrigan Way. Okay. Yeah. And the bakery can use. Uh, uh, no, right there. now the plan for the bakery is to use Merrigan Way. As okay, well. so everything will be going Merrigan okay. Way, not Coates Avenue. Right. Yeah. That's all. Great. Thank you. Thank you. I think that would be an emergency exit, but not yeah. not regular traffic. <clears throat> Good evening. Uh, Bruce Hunter, 103C in Gully Road, South Deerfield. I have several um, questions of the board. Um, the first of which is in landscaping. Um, my concern is this is an existing fence. We don't know the condition of it. it hasn't been stated. Um, there's significant grading being done behind the building. Um, and if they are going to protect the, the existing vegetation, um, my concern is how they're going to do that. And if that fence is to fail, what requirements uh, is the board going to have um, DuPont uh, agreed to, you're actually waiving that 20-foot buffer zone on the residential area. So that's a waiver well, as part of your regulation. Not, not necessarily, because what, what you don't under, well, I don't uh, understand. The, 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 uh, the existing fence that's there is not new, but it's not falling down by any means. And it's uh, buffered by these, I don't know if it's an abravity or some sort of a, a green tree that's substantially tall. It's got to be at least 20 feet tall. And I, plus their property extends toward the neighborhood, you know, in different areas, some as much as 20 feet. So if they were to remove that, they would be encroaching on the neighbors, and they've chosen not to do that, to leave that growth that's substantial there as a buffer zone. Their building is going to be set back from there and between their building and the existing uh, buffer zone if you will or the existing uh, shrubs will be a swale to, you know, yeah the swale is within two feet of the fence correct the but it's the been swale. there for several no years. it's proposed it's proposed it's grading good. behind the building if you well, look at the grading plan the yep. significant grading behind the building well, I'll mm -hmm. ask tony about that but i is think that's that, fine that, that, okay go ahead that's one so you'll be granting a waiver for that, um, for you're allowed to, because um, you're not requiring a 20-foot <coughs> buffer strip um, against the residential property. You're saying the existing strip is is something that will. Suffice. Well, I th I think. Well, that we want the, the, it's to the neighbor's uh, advantage. Oh, I understand that. Right. Yeah. yeah, because that 20 could feet. Be different. That but 20 it, it's, feet. It's, it's going to be more than 20 feet. Yeah. So I don't see where you'd say yeah. that they would need a waiver. I mean, waiver. if you look at this, well, it's, a, it's quite. Um, well, it does say that a continuous landscaper scape buffer strip at least 20 feet in width shall be provided and maintained in perpetuity between the existing ex expedited okay. permit right. district yep. and any residential district. Right. I want to make sure that happens. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure it will. Okay. It's to their advantage yeah. to have um, the, to have the buffer. But the fact is that they're not requiring the buffer to be replanted and moved. I understand that. I mean, I just that's want, just quite concern. to the neighborhood. If you look advantage. at the grading, the grading is into that area significantly. If the plant's roots are exposed, they might not be living. So I just want to be, my concern is the existing grading behind the building. I think um, they will be careful because so they don't want to have to replace Just to clarify, Bruce, yep. so if, if you're thinking um, with the new grading that goes on, if there's damage to the roots and the, and the trees die, what are you would, do? would we require them to put another, yep. as if they were going to build something new right. and nothing was there? I got you. Okay. okay. <clears throat> In the stormwater management, under 150, the bylaw 155.1A6, <coughs> Um, it says establish procedures for the town's review of stormwater management plans and for the town's inspection of, imp of the approved stormwater treatment practices. And I want, just want to make sure that you have a right to go into the property, that that's written into 
um, whatever document needs to be written into, um, and that somebody will review that um, the stormwater um, as it's designed. Um, relative to the stormwater, I believe in the southwest corner there's a detention pond with dry walls inside. To, to he was just pond. talking about that, yes. I understand. Um, I looked at the test pits and I didn't weren't sure that um, the dry walls were, uh, I believe the dry walls are in the estimated seasonal high water. Just something you should check. Make sure that we have one foot of clearance above the Separation. existing basin yep. to estimate high water. If that's as part of your stormwater review, it should be um, should be done. Um, they said that the well, Tony, is that there? It is, isn't that correct? It's, it's the, the reason why the dry wells are there is in frozen conditions, and that we can still get right. down to be able to drain and drain that area. And then we're going to take it and dump directly into that basin. Um, I found it better to uh, to have some uh, an infiltration basin. It's not unusual to have dry wells. What uh, Mr. Hunter is saying that the bottom of that that periods of time they have a little water in it. I'm, I'm okay with that because the benefits I get, it's still below the frozen area and I still can get some infiltration out of it. Um, that could happen at, at some times and sometimes, the majority of time it's probably not going to be an issue at all. So I take that as an improvement, having the dry wells to be able to infiltrate in frozen times versus not. Okay. My only one concern is that we follow the bylaw that we have one foot of clearance yep. between mm -hmm. estimated seasonal high water and the bottom of the retention pond. I don't know if that was not addressed with the last discussion. So if okay. it is, it should be addressed in writing or you can take it verbally tonight. Um, during construction, will there be any temporary erosion control, temporary basins? We're looking uh, near. Uh, I'm sure uh, you're going to have brook. to have curtains, right, uh, or um, the booms. I, there's an erosion control plan, which is the very basic guidelines, but it meets the requirements. That's part of the plan set. Uh, we also have a stormwater, stormwater pollution prevention plan that goes even more in depth, which is required by NIPTES, and uh, it's incumbent upon the and contractors and follow that. So there's things on the erosion control plan that I don't show, like a concrete washout area, good. Uh, uh, good. temporary sewer facility, porta potties, things yep. like that are shown on that plan that are not part of this land development permit. What we're doing is showing the perimeter erosion control uh, uh, protection for the inlets in that, because the one thing we don't want to do is have sediment get into in inlets until where we've got the parking right. lot paved and vegetation takes full because it'll compromise the dry wells, the infiltration basin, the deep sump catch basin. So there's provisions for that on the plan that the contractor's got to take care of. So it's those basic things. But construction, as you know, is a, a moving object. We give them the guides with the stormwater pollution plan and they can they know how to handle that site. If there's an issue, then they call me, I come out and I look at it and we strategize on how we solve that issue. That's typical construction. Um, one uh, additional item, um, the existing sewer, the material, you said that um, that pipe was clear. I just wonder what the material was that you're going to be hooking into. It's uh, clay, I believe. Clay, clay pipe, and there's no root systems in it. No, there and was one little, you don't want me to answer. No, no, please. No, no, we one want you to. segment that did, but they will, you know, with the uh, video, they can flip that out. It was, in, it was Surprisingly, very good shape, right hmm. from that manhole to the intercept. Yeah. So we have a video of that at the town. We'll let that mm -hmm. That's typically a pipe that you want to replace and do, and not have in your sewer system. And when you meet with we meet with David Prickett, you can ask him that question. Right. Mm -hmm. So the, the the clay pipe extends from that one catch basin over toward. One, one and does it go toward Coates? No, sewer. Path? It goes to the interceptor sewer. Okay. Yeah. And Long distance. Um, I was curious, um, in the, in the advertisement you, you listed 5,700, I believe that special permit, 5,300, in the, um, section, use table section, manufacturing, processing, assembly, 
fabrication that cannot meet performance standards of 4,900 um, are, require a special permit. Have you made the determination that they have met the performance standards of 4,900? Uh, yes, because yes. It's, the, the building is large enough. The, the, the entirety of it is large enough. It's going to be roughly 3,500 square feet. 3,000. I mean 35,000 square feet. Is that what you're referring to? No. But I, there are performance standards in section 4,900. You just need to determine whether you're going to issue a special permit or not. And I want to make sure that you issue whatever waivers you need to issue, you get whatever grants you need to, I mean, easements you need to get. It's 4,900. Um, that should be done. Um, my last um, question. Um, actually, I might be one of those, more than one. Um, the driveway curb cut, is that considered off of the extension of Merrigan Way? Yes. And is it larger than 24 feet? Is what, the driveway? The curb cut. I don't know. It's the, it's the width of Merrigan Way. It's really an extension of the, of the existing road. It's a driveway back to us. So I can scale it. I think it's 24, it might be 26 feet. The, existing um, the width, um, in no case, shall exceed 24 feet in width unless waived by the Board of Selectmen. I just want to make sure that you're doing whatever waivers you need to do. Do you plan to uh, submit these questions in writing? No, I think you're going to vote tonight. Yeah. How do well, you know? So we just want to make sure we have a list of them, Bruce. <laughs> so you're How do you know we're voting the, the today? <laughs> what? How do you know we're voting today? I will if you don't vote. Today. Yeah. So you're, you're but, saying that you want to make sure that the driveway is I'm not just saying these are your regulations. I get it. And if you're going to, re if it's over 24 feet, okay. you need to waive it. And just for the document, when you okay. prepare your... Yep. Um, approval of this project whatever waivers easements all those things need to be included correct and that brings me um, to the last um, question it's in the site plan review 4790 enforcement um, we want to make sure that the board of selectmen may require a monitoring program post permit uh, to in, uh, insurance of compliance of all purposes for the time period and as they may be specified on the site plan approval. I just want to make sure that you include whatever you, you want right. to have the town do for review of the project after it's built. Tony, were you able to just tell how wide that is on? Yeah, there's one. I, I measured, I believe, the road width of Merriman Way is 24. So we would take the extension, the width of that, as the curb cut. That's the way I would see it. Yep. Now, if the town had extended Merriman Way through the property, so we have an easement sure. in here to extend yep. the yep. Merriman Way for access to utilities, yep. and we had our, and that was public way, and we had our curb cut in where the loading docks are, it's extra wide there. We would be asking for a waiver of that because that would be the curb cut. Yeah, that's why um, I think so. We need that for the opening, so I can see where Mr. Hunter would be asking that. Um, but we would want to waiver it because I want to make sure that, I mean, I love the setup you have with Natural Baker, so um, we do need to know then what, so we, we want to give you the actual, whatever width it is. So, okay, well, see, we, I'm taking it as back here where the road right, is left. Right. This would be the curb <clears> cut <throat> here, question. the extension. Exactly. If this was a, uh, so that's a driveway. It's actually going to be shared between us and New England Bakers. Right. So I just okay. want to make sure whatever it is, so we, that, we give it to you because. Right. If but, you're going to consider that, that as the curb cut and not you, that you the curb cut, the we would need a waiver for that width. Yeah. I can tell you what that width is. Would we consider it? We would. We take. We would carry that. I I, I would consider the curb cut as where the road stops. The easement where they're traveling okay. is not. That's that's, that's, that's the easement. That's their driveway. So if that area that, that Tony's suggesting might be larger than 24 feet, that would be considered the same as of the parking lot. So road. the town owns that piece of property. The town does, does not own that. Does not. Who own owns that. that piece of property? New England Bakers. New right. Bakers. The New England Bakers. Okay. Too. 
So that and the, they're getting easement. access off of right. New England Baker's property. Right. So to answer so your question, the curb is, cut is, is 24. At the end of Merrigan Way. Merrigan Way. Thank that's you. That's 24 feet. Uh, Correct. Right. Plan. So okay. no. So thank you very much. Just, but that's we, a good comment. But that's the way we would do it. So right. thank you, Bruce. Because thank you. I want to make sure. So you feel the setup is fine. Yes. This is private. When right. we end off of the um, off of. Uh, I, I, so, sorry to be so particular. No, no. Since Bruce so, brought this up, I want to make sure I love the way you have the layout. So whatever yes. you need, I want to make so, sure. So this area right here is an easement to parcel C for access and utilities. Okay. Okay. So the way I take it, see, the road was never continued on right. to there. It's 24 feet here. And so what we're going to do is extend that. So. I view that as our curb cut. That's going to go across. We got to extend Merrigan Way here, but that 24 feet then would be an extension of a, a driveway for both properties okay. offhand. Understand. So, so but Bruce if if this was public from here to there, that would be our curb cut, and that's 80 feet wide because we got the three loading docks and the trucks and to get in there and the parking. So that wouldn't require a waiver, in my opinion. But right. it's how I, you look I, at it. Yeah, that, that's 80 feet wide. Do you, do you see what, yeah, what, what Bruce was talking about is on private property, and because that uh, curb cut is where the town Merrigan Way stops. Right. Yeah. So. Okay. So, because I, I, I love the way it was laid out. So it, I don't want to change it. It's a very good way. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, Nicholas Orsini, uh, 34 Fair Street. Um, oh. My only question is, does this include the uh, proposed phase two? For approval, or yes, so it does. yes, and yes. then so my follow-up question is: Do we know what the roof, planned roof height of phase two would be? Is it planned on being level the with the existing same. building? Yeah. Okay, that's it. Yeah. Fair enough. Did you have any? Um, did you have any questions about your uh, fence line or anything like that, Nicholas? Uh, I know what uh, what part of my property they own, so I, I'm okay with them leaving it there. Would I like it to be a more beautiful fence? Sure, but they're giving me three extra feet in the back of my house, so. I, 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 what it is is the plantings. You don't, I mean, if, obviously if something dies, you want to replace it, but. If, if we can keep the existing plantings, that's to me is really important. I'm the one with the 20 foot arborvitaes that run that line, <laughs> that whole line there, so. Yeah, yeah. so okay, so you're Great. okay with it. Yeah. All right, Great. good. Because I, I mean, that was my concern. You know, I'll only be able to see like a three foot span of their building between my arborvitaes and where the garage currently is. Right. Yeah, okay, good. Great. Um, is there any other questions? questions? Um, I'm okay with, okay with everything now that we got the okay I, I, thank you so much for working with natural baker so yes. it makes the whole thing flow I'm, I'm very appreciative of that um, then it will look like it truly was planned together so thank you um, let me just uh, get to yep just a second I just want to make sure where is that? Um, so you have any other questions, Trev? Well, my only questions are, would we want to incorporate into this the access to the site, any of the questions that Bruce had into our decision, um, and then do we have to do that before we vote on this, or do we? I think it's something that we probably should discuss quickly. Um, you know, I don't know. I, I, I see this a lot at different um, site plan reviews where, you know, the town has certain rights to inspections to make sure things are taken care of. Um, I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but who in town does that? You know, that's, well, that's our I mean, issue, you know. Dick is pretty good. He follows up on stuff. Yeah, or, if there was a problem. Yeah. Inspector. And, right. and we certainly get phone calls if there's any issues. So. Would you have a problem with that, having us, the town, 
I, I think that you're probably Something going to my contractor. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is more of you know not sure. during construction because during construction the, the building department would have the type of access. This is more after the fact. I I, I feel pretty confident that you're going to take good care of this place, but you um, obviously care for your clients that are coming there. But sure. but I just want to you know my question is true if if you know next year, two years from now after the grading is done in the back and you see half the arbor vitae's go your intent is to replace those i mean the, the plan yeah, is I mean, to maintain we're, that we're gonna we're gonna maintain our property yeah. correct yeah. period okay. so I, I we don't need we don't need a babysitter yeah understood and I, I i actually feel pretty strongly that you would um given your history okay if there's no other comments i guess at this time we'll close the public hearing and uh we can talk about it amongst I make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. See. Now this form that we can we can go and fill in after the fact. This is something that was prepared. Was this not prepared by uh, Lisa? Lisa. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm, 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 I'll make a motion to sign to vote on this. You so make a motion to approve the site plan, yeah. expedite? As presented. Uh, my, um, just my concern is that I just wanted to make sure all this was filled out before we voted on it. But. Yeah, I think you, you have to actually go in to draft a decision and then you should review it before you vote on it. I mean, I understand you, you're accepting what they're saying, but you have to put your decision together based on all the information that you've heard and what you intend to Right. Require. We can we can vote to accept the site plan as it was presented to us, and right. we can still fill this out. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yes. Yep, yes. I'm good with that. I'm okay. fine with she that. She made the motion. Which I'll second. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 So you're including these conditions? Are you inherent that he's yes. reviewed basically? Yes. Yeah. So you want to fill this out right now? Um, so that you have it? We can do that. I think we're all we all have the same one. You want to take that? Um that's not where's okay. Do you have another one of those? Uh, no, we don't have a final copy. No. Oh, okay. We still need to. Right. Yeah, so we don't have anything right. to sign yet because it's so not filled is, out. So we just fill this out, and um, then then what's the next? I don't remember what the next. Well, step once, is. once we <laughs> once we uh, fill this out, you know, then we all can sign it, and uh, it'll okay. be on the way. So we voted yes. So I think you. Um, um, have everything pretty much ready to go, oh. except we just have to fill this out. Um, it has to be filed. Uh, we have to we have to file it. Can we be in touch this week? Yeah. Okay. We have to come in and file. We we could just sign this tomorrow. Okay. Yes. Um. Uh, no, I no, I don't think that. Not, that uh, Wendy's not going to be here. We should be able this to have this be done. completed. You still have you, you're issuing yeah. your special permit, site plan review, and stormwater management. Do you have uh, three applications? Uh, it's all part of your expedited permit. Do you have a, uh, have a copy of that before you get yep. done with this? Yep. Okay, so we have the site plan. Yep. We voted yes on it. Um, and we, we put in Tony's name. Yep. Your decision starts on page six. That's going to be fixed because it wasn't. Bruce, do you have a list of your um, comments? Bruce, mm -hmm. do you have a list of your comments? Um, Diane, did you yeah. were you take I, recording them? Yes, okay. I did. I
seems like we're all uh, all yeah. we have to do hours. We fill out the hours of construction. Um, when when will your hours of construction be? Six a.m. to six p.m. if possible. Um, I think it would be better seven in seven. the morning. Seven. Yeah. Yes. That's okay. Seven to seven. Is seven, seven to seven. seven. Pretty. To seven. I know it changed, but right now it's pretty dark at six o'clock. <laughs> yeah, light hours. We've got some okay. making up to do. Yes, yes. I know. I, I realize that. But 6 a.m. is a little bit So early. 7, seven nice. is fine as long as okay. I get yep. at least a 10 to 12 hour day. That's yep. what I'm asking for. Yep. Okay. Yep. So for se seven, not before 7 a.m. 6 foot fence. Um, Dumpsters inside. Yep. The road control's already there. And, and, and you'll um, have a dumpster the dumpster is from noon's yep. roll-off. It's yep. part of the permit application. It'll be yep. a food dumpster. Okay. Um, two porter johns are already there. The site is fenced in with temporary fence. Yep. We have the 20-foot buffer. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Not before I do. I don't see. So I think it's, we can sign tonight. I don't see white Diane. What is? What was your concern about not signing this? Well, I don't have a final version of it, so I mean, I don't have the final document. I have oh. just a draft. Well, we could. I mean, so. we can just fill in the f couple things because we just got the hours of construction, um, the dumpsters they're going to have, the fencing they already said. Um, okay. Did you? Did you, I mean, I think you can did you get this from the? Uh, so you don't have this on your computer to print out. Okay. I only have all right. Copy of it. All right. Well, what we can do, we don't have a final uh, final copy, but we'll fin we'll fill it out because we just have the we got the information that we didn't have. Make sure we have everything. Um, and I I think we can sign it tomorrow. We can sign it tomorrow. Yeah. And I'll, I'll we could take this one as long as it didn't say draft all over it. That's what. I uh, know. That's the only problem. Just do it tomorrow when we, we have, tomorrow. A, have yeah. a clean copy and some we'll time. We'll have a copy with no um, draft on it. Yeah. And we'll have the hour 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Right. For construction. Um, the dumpster requirements, the construction fence, the you know, site security, all that yep. kind of stuff during construction yep. is here. I, I, I think, think you saw this, right? Under 13. Did you see it? You Would you like to have, have you can have this draft copy. Sure. Oops. It's basically your they think you arranged it seven days prior, construct pre construction meeting. That's in there too. I don't know if that's in there. What page are you on? Oh, well, they've already had that. Yeah, yeah. yeah they've already they already that's had already that. That's, that's already happened. Yep. Yep. Um, okay. Well, no, I mean that this is part of your decision. Basically. Right. But okay. we already knew that they did that. They did well, that. No, it's part. It's going to happen when they start construction. Basically, this is part of your decision. Right. Which you're saying tonight. Yeah. So right. You haven't done it yet. Well. Yeah, we've had the equipment there for. They've already. Yeah. A couple yeah. of weeks. Yeah. And Dick has already been out. Ready. You can have that. I assume meeting. Promptly. We just want to be able to get started yeah. literally can, tomorrow. Yes, you can. We <laughs> you will. Can. We will. Okay. We'll get this paperwork. At 9 a.m. to sign this. Okay. okay. Well, once we get this from the lawyer, whoever drafted this for us, okay. it's clean. It we'll sign draft. it. Right. Got it. We'll um, sign it, and you can have it then. Okay. 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 So I think. You can pick this up tomorrow. Great. Okay. Trevor, right. what's your schedule tomorrow for signing that? What time? Uh, you know what? This this you back know, I'll page. do it as soon as I can come in. I, you know, I don't want to be pressured into. No. But there's you know, also there's an appeal process, as you see in here. By you yeah. know, then the town clerk has to sign up. There's a right. 20 day period. Yes. Uh, right. you, 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 you can work at risk. Yeah. You can work at yeah. risk. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay. So I just. Um, I, I, I mean, I'm okay with it, but you know, if, um, why don't we wait till tomorrow? We'll get this all printed out right, and we'll sign it. Okay. Yeah, oh yeah, you know why we have to? Because it's October. It's not September. Yeah. So it was. Um, we were going to fill in the old. date. It's sure. old. So yep. we'll have to say October. Fair enough. You know, uh, what was today? The eleventh. The eleventh. Tenth. 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 
Okay. Sign that and then we'll file it with the clerk and they'll hold it for 20 days. Yes. So we get the approval. They're going to go after us. Yes. And yes. In 20 days, they'll let us know. I'll come pick it up. I'll record the document. Correct. Correct. Yes. It, it will be fine. That's the way it is. All right. Yes. Great. Thank you. Thank okay, you. folks. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you, you too. very much. Thank you. Thank you for being so patient um, with us. I haven't really yeah, been all that patient. You're getting <laughs> 20 days anyway. Just I make it look right. right. I do. We wanted to make sure you had everything. Okay. Take care, folks. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Greenfield, okay. That's fine. Appreciate Thanks. it. Thank Thanks. You. Tony, thank you very much. You answered our questions really well. And I, I really want you to know I'm so appreciative of so you too. working with natural bakers. I mean, we voted on the site plan, but we have not voted correctly. on the stormwater or the, um, what are right. the other three things? It, but it doesn't say that. And that's why yeah. I'm so happy. Because I didn't see that. So, uh, so just expedited permit project application, okay, and a special permit application under the zoning bylaw, and then a site plan review, which we did do, and then a stormwater permit application as well. We'd have to accept that. Okay. Oh, I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled that it's going to be really nice. Thank you. I wanted a local business. Excuse me. I see oh, sorry. I see yeah. Do you want to take one of these? This thing? Uh, no, I wanted to see that. No, oh, yeah, see yeah, yeah. This is yours. I'm sorry. No, no, it's all right. Um, Maybe I'll just make a copy of that. I want to go make a copy of that when we're done. You, um, you just, we, get, we yep. should fill this out. I'm going to fill this out, okay? You can but, start. Yeah. Now, so we're going to cross this September 19th out, right? That's right. Yep. And we're going to put October 10th. I don't mean to crowd your space. But no, 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 go no, ahead. No. Oh, these books are too big. I, know. I want Diana to have um, this filled out. So we opened and closed it tonight, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, Diana, you have the dates of the recorder when it was. Um, yes, mm -hmm. I've got the. Yeah. Um, oh, can you guys so give me the dates? It's uh, September 22nd and September 29th. Okay, just a second. September 22nd, 2018, and September 29th. 29th. Okay. Okay. Um, did we get the we got the proposed floor plan, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. All right. We have the grading okay. plan, floor plan, conversion plan, and landscape plan. A special permit application under twenty three hundred. Um. What's Tony's last name? It's um. Wins I know, but how do you spell it? Yeah, I don't know. Spell it for you. W O N. W O N. S E. S E. S K I. S K I. Junior. Junior. Okay. Anthony. W O N S E S K I. Yep. Okay. Um. Do we list the concert? The um, Conservation Commission on this one. It says development plans on the submission were reviewed by the board, the Conservation Commission, and the Building Committee uh, Inspector. I believe so. Okay. I'm trying to see.
Um, he said that uh, the parking, they were just going to go, and um, so there was no, nothing. Um, right. The parking, there was no waivers. No waivers. Park. Nope. Okay. Um, so I know they were talking about it, but they ended up just complying, right? Mm -hmm. they, filled, they did. I wish so. They, their special permit application, um, I don't necessarily know that they needed that because of the, they included the entire um, building in, in phase. Mm -hmm. um, but since they applied for it, should we vote on accepting it? Yes, I, just to be safe, I would say. I, th I would say so. You know, in, in other words, according to the bylaws, be, if it was under the 30,000 square feet, they would need a special permit. But because they use it, as, they put it right. in as phasing, 35, it, they don't need that special permit, but they applied for it. So I don't have a problem with it. Do you want to take a vote on the special mm -hmm. permit as well? Sure. Okay. Okay. Uh, so we want to make a motion for that? Um, I make a motion that we approve the special permit, just in case there's a question, of the phased size. For the Dumont Company. For the second. Dumont Company. Um, what was it? Just a second. I had written it down. Uh, the amount of, the size amount? Yeah. It was um, 32,000. Uh, just in case there's any question, it was 20,900. And then fourteen thousand three hundred. So it's thirty-five thousand two hundred for a total of thirty-five hundred. Thirty-five thousand. Thirty-five thousand two hundred. Two hundred. That's right. Yep. Yep. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So there shouldn't be any question on that now. Did you get that, Diana? <laughs> it's already in your decision. Basically. Okay. Right. All right. Great. Well, I just want to cover all these bases because I, I was, as we were talking, I was thinking about this, and I was like, I, I didn't understand what the special permit was for. But they applied for it, and either way. I don't the think site, they need you to apply for it. I don't think it, they did either. Well, I, they don't. It's okay. Because our bylaws allow for the phase construction that was a, a greater than an amount. Okay, so let's see the application under the zoning bylaws. We did the site plan review. This is good. And stormwater. Give me just a quick um, second to do the stormwater. I think this is consistent with the goals and objectives of the town's master plan, but we have not updated our master plan. It expired in 2010. But if um, even if it's expired, I think it's. I mean, it doesn't matter, does it? I mean, we don't have a current one. We don't have. If we didn't change it, I would say no. that it. Okay. Diana, just note in the minutes that we discussed that the master plan has expired, town master plan has expired and was not funded to be renewed um, in 2010. And it is in compliance with the expired plan. Okay. There is no updated plan to be in compliance with. Do we need to vote on that? What's that? That kind of makes me kind of nervous. What's that? This is here. The proposal is consistent with the goals and objectives of the master, town's master plan. But the master plan expired in 2010. The mm -hmm. finance committee didn't want to, update, you know, spend any money to update well, it. I, didn't, it, I updated it, it twice, and I wasn't going to do it a third time. Well, I would say that it complied with the last master plan that we had, and if we don't have a dumb different, then... Yeah, but should we vote in it? That we want to waiver that? I don't know. That would be my only question. It's not anything to do with them. It's not their fault. That when they, it's our fault. If they to right. replace that exactly. fence, if it needed to be, did they yes. agree to All right. I yeah, think we should just say that we discussed it and we decided that. Would you replace okay. that? If so they're going to install and maintain it and with the yes. existing in for perpetuity because we have that under our condition okay. in that what section. That was Diana. Would you would you just make note that we we discussed their um, proposal that they were complying with the master plan even though our master plan had expired several years ago we have not re done a new one since then but so we did talk about it in that it says the proposal is consistent with the goals and objectives of the town's master plan and with the other plans that have been adopted by the town so what I, do you want it to say it's consistent I, with it's yeah, that's basically I've, you saying that as part of your okay decision. right what exactly. happened is it expired in 2010 
and we did not fund it to be re, re, um, renewed. What expired? The, the town's master plan expired in 2010. Oh, well, they don't really expire. You just, they yeah. just yeah, keep going. If the you, last one. Yeah, until you done renew done. One, Until you right. do a new one. They're right. only good for 10 years. Well, right. I mean, you ideally want to do them. But have your goals and objectives changed? No, because I'm, I'm the one that did it in 2000, and I'm the one that did it in 1990. So, so. I, did you intend to have um, industrial in that area? Was that part of your plan? It was, right? Um, we wanted to have to a reuse local... That Local area. business. Right. Uh, so I think did, it's consistent. When did the town buy that? Was it 2003? Bruce? Uh, I'm not sure when they bought it, but they did a master plan for that site. It was residential, mixed use, commercial. Yep. That was one um, of the proposals. Was industrial plan shown for one building. Yeah. The entire site was two options. It was a committee established. It worked for six months. It was all plans for that property. Yeah. But when you say these plans are consistent with what you had hoped your yeah. goals and objectives well, were Well, it was be? it was my hope when we when I um, advocated for um, purchasing it was that we would have good local businesses that would provide um, above average wages and jobs for our community right. so and I that would that it's consistent. encourage um, downtown businesses use you know lunch gift shop, whatever. Well, it'll smell a lot better. I, I think it smells better than one of the other. I said it would smell well, a lot better. We can smell better oh, when we oh, have some yeah. pickle place was pretty bad. There. <laughs> yeah. um, all right, so the last thing that we probably should vote on was the stormwater permit, too. I'm just that reading through those bindings now. Okay. And, uh, um. Yeah, because it says it, be the applicant proposes to maintain and perpetuity. Well, right, but no, that's what your decision is. This is our your finding, decision. yes. Correct. correct. Okay, so that's correct. That right. is correct. Okay, just wanted to be sure. Yep. Okay, thank you. I was confused about what was being said before about the property lines. Yep. like everything is okay. So this just needs to be. Diane, are you going to be here tomorrow? Yes, or, yes I'll be here. Could you okay. just uh, check with Lisa and see if we could get a copy of that without the draft? Yeah, I think. Oh, well, here's, here's the, um, Diana, here's the stuff filled in. Give Trevor they a couple do. more minutes to they, use. They, it was going to be, be yeah. Okay. There were going to be two handicapped and. Um, they're not. They're not. Forty-three. Not, Forty-four. Forty-four. Right. They're, they're That's going to get changed. They originally applied for a waiver of the park, mm -hmm. but they. But they, they're not they've going met to it now. So that would be on page six. I know, but. Page. Oh. I don't know if it's the same as mine. It's right at the top. That was one of the two. things that we were supposed to check. What's that? Of pedestrian vehicular. Yeah, what is it? So they put those 44. 44 instead of 43. Oh, you see 44. Okay, so mine's old. So I might old. have a newer copy. I think mine's old. I had this a couple weeks ago. So. Okay. Mine's the same as yours. What? I this know one, that yeah. copy I was saying, because oh. it's gray. The yellow one. You might have a newer one. Yeah. Okay. So I think it's everything you 
You propose to locate the loading docks, trash, and collision parking on the north side of the building. Yes. Yep. Toward the center of the industrial area, the location of the site will be ended. The roadways long used by the manufacturing base that ordered to be traffic to and from the site as well. So, yeah. The only thing, um, I just wanted to make sure, since we had such a turmoil with the contractor at Cumberland Farms, can we just make sure that the contractor actually have to just check and make sure the erosion barriers are in, mm -hmm. you know, to, just for the... I, I was over there with Kevin today, they're there now. Oh, they're already there, yeah. okay. The fence is up, too. Well, then I'm not, it's yeah. not even the issue. I, I just, you know, wanted to make sure that we had um, the thing about all, I mean, a lot it was of that. It was the contractor's fault. Yeah, it was, it was an oversight. There's no doubt about it. Uh, the, I, when I was over there talking with Kevin today, there, there are existing multiple uh, catch bases there. Everything that's going to be done here is going to be a fast improvement. Oh, you know, yeah. No, I'm excited. I, and I especially am excited that he's doing everything on the ground. They're yep. enhancing everything and putting it on the grounds. And I think the best thing, I think the folks from the uh, bakery are, are tickled pink to be working with them because they're getting some very oh, yeah. well-deserved gu uh, guidance. You know. Oh, my God, yes. You know, because, so. you know, they yes, they really did. They did. This is why nothing's happening. I know. Unfortunately, that happens. You know, there are people out there that take advantage of other people. People don't know. Is, this is so wonderful. Because, it is. Um, Tony, by working with him, it's, it's going to look like it's designed yep. all at once. It's really good. Which is fabulous. I mean, this is an ideal situation. So nothing, has, nothing looks jagged. Right. Oh, this it's is gonna, so wonderful. It's going to make it's going to be a very good development. Yep. Get in well, we have one more to take. Well, a stormwater. Okay. Storm water. So you want to make a motion? I make a motion that we um, approve the stormwater plan as proposed. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, good. So um, we did voted yes on all of them. And, uh, Diana, for the notes, can you just say that I'm very happy that it's going to be underground. Everything's going to be underground. And there's not going to be a underground. Um, and hopefully, no mosquitoes. No mosquitoes. But hopefully, we can get natural bakers to do the same thing. <coughs> so, the only problem is our highway garage. It was supposed to be the model for everybody else. Well, maybe we can donate some frogs to come to the farms for their lagoon to eat all the bugs. I'm, I'm yes, it is. For, yeah, um, let's um, make a motion to dissolve. Yeah. Do we have anything else? Is there public comment? Any more public comment? Let me. Uh, no. We did everything. Let me see. And you are meeting next week. We're yeah, meeting next week at seven o'clock. <laughs> yeah, we do have things on okay. the agenda. Okay. So, all right. You made a motion to dissolve. Yes, I did. All second. Oh, second. I already second. Oh, you did. I was. All those in favor. Aye. Aye.